Money Matters. I am so glad that you tune in today to view the show that comes to you every week live. We come here to let you know that your money matters. It matters what you make. It matters what you spend. It matters what you save. It matters how you manage the money that has been entrusted to you. So once again, thank you for joining in. I encourage you to tell someone call a friend, call a neighbor, let them know Real Money Matters is on the air. And we are here to discuss and to bring an awareness to you concerning your finances. Every day that we get up, we have to make financial decisions. So this program is brought to you to bring an awareness to you about your finances, to give you some thoughts concerning managing your money, how you can be a better steward over the money that you've worked hard for. You've worked hard for your money. And so we want to help you to track it and be accountable and to allow yourself to uh, bring in a, a likeness an enlightenment to you concerning how to manage your money. Yes, we want to, with unemployment high and the bills that keep coming, you know, good jobs are hard to find. What do you do? How do you manage? Because the bills are going to keep coming. So this show, we're here today to help you to find a way to get past uh, the point where you not don't have enough from week to week, from living from paycheck to paycheck. Are you tired of living paycheck to paycheck? Then you need to tune in and get some valuable tips on how to develop a budget. Yes, the B word, a budget that works for you. Know that there's no cookie cutter uh, for everyone. Nothing works the same for everyone. You have to have a specific, customized um, plan that works for you. And guess what? You must actively participate in the process. So I'm encouraging you to get some paper or get your tablet, take some notes, uh, listen. Um, I might say something that will uh, spark an interest or a question or a thought that's going to help you manage your finances much better. So get your favorite cup of Java, call a friend, call a neighbor, let them know Real Money Matters is on the air. And we are going to be talking about various topics that we discussed over the course of the show. Uh, I'd love to hear from you if these shows are helping you and you want it to continue to come to you and you would like this program to continue, then I would like to hear from you. I'd like to know that we are making a difference and that we are helping you and giving you helpful hints, hints and tips that's going to uh, allow you to manage your finances more, better, or properly, uh, and help you oh God, to be uh, aware of what's going on, even in your finance. And, you know, a lot of times it's just knowing. Knowing is half the battle. <laughs> just knowing where things are, identifying your income, identifying your expenses. And I think a lot of times we ignore things, and ignoring them um, does not help us to resolve them. To re get a resolve, you must know what the problem is. And so that is the biggest thing, is to identify what is going on with your finances. Once you know, then you can come up with a plan. Then you can have a solution, because there is a resolve. If you can't do it on your own, then there's help. There's this program, I'm available. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, you can always feel free to call me here at the studio if you have questions while we're on the air from 10 to 11. Feel free to call in. Um, the studio number is 248-996. 8954. So if you'd like to call in, give us your comments. Uh, if you have a question you'd like answered, feel free to um, call into the studio. Once again, 248-996-8954. Or if you prefer not to call in and you'd like to email me, email me your questions, email me your comments, uh, you can reach me at Real Money Matters at RachelRKennedy.com. Email me at Real Money Matters at RachelRKennedy.com. Okay, so you may have someone who maybe wants to mail me something. <laughs> maybe you don't want to call, maybe you don't want to email, but you can send me a, a letter. If you are one to write letters, uh, I'll accept your letter as well. And you can send me a letter to P.O. Box 510. 
P.O. Box 510-232, and that's in Livonia, Michigan. Livonia, L-I-V-O-N-I-A, Michigan, 48151. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, so I just wanted to put that information out there. Uh, these programs are helping you. I really would encourage you to write or call and let me know that Real Money Matters is mad. It does matter to you, okay? Uh, moving right along. Oh my gosh, we're getting closer to Christmas. Christmas, Christmas. And they say, why do you keep mentioning Christmas? Christmas is August. Why are you mentioning Christmas? Well, Soon it's going to be September, then it's going to be October, then it's going to be November, and Thanksgiving is going to be here, and then it's going to be Black Friday, and then it's going to be like, oh no, I got to shop, I got to get all my lists together, I got to go in all this crowd. Wouldn't it be wonderful if you've already gotten all your Christmas shopping done before Black Friday, you could just go to the movies, you can just sit back and relax, you don't have to uh, be out in the hustle and the bustle and the crowds and they're fighting <laughs> over uh, 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 new items that are coming out, you know, and, and they're staking out at night, you know, two and three o'clock in the morning, trying to get a good deal on a uh, item that you probably could get for less in the summertime. You think about that? So right now we have 138 days till Christmas. We are still in the Christmas countdown and I encourage you, Please, I encourage you to start saving. It's still not too late. You can still start saving now. If you haven't began the envelope system that I mentioned to you uh, in previous shows, get yourself an envelope. Market Christmas fund. Just market Christmas fund. And this, when you have some extra money, just throw it in there or incorporate it into your monthly budget that I'm going to every month set aside. $5, $10, $20, whatever the case, $5 a week, that's $20 a month. Um, whatever the case, because whatever you save now is less you'll have to spend then. Uh, I want to also encourage you to start the Christmas fund. It's still not too late to start the Christmas fund at a financial institution. Those are very helpful because they will not give you access to that money until November. So some people may need a little more restraint than putting it in an envelope because they may, you know, find themselves using it for some other thing other than Christmas. So I encourage you that. Get your list together. Start writing down uh, who you would like to uh, be a blessing to or who you'd like to give to during that season. Also consider volunteering. I mentioned that. Find a place where you can go and volunteer and help those that are less fortunate. Help those who don't have family during that time. So there are many, many options. I remember when I first got married, my husband and I, we didn't have a lot. And so what I would do, I would bake cookies. You know, it's not really what you get, it's how you give, the spirit of giving. And that is what I want you to have, a spirit of giving and not so much caught up into things, but caught up into the idea of giving and being a blessing and helping other people. So think about Christmas. Christmas is coming. I'm telling you, there's so many things that affect our budget every month. Our budget is not the same every month. We have our regular bills, which we discussed before, but we also have the irregular things. Like no summer. We had summer came and summer's here and summer's almost over uh, which means back to school yes and those of us who have children we have to prepare for back to school and school is expensive even elementary high uh, middle school high school even before they get to the college level there's still our expenses involved in school so we have to budget for that every season our children grow and they need a new wardrobe <laughs> you know so those are things you have to think about and those are things you plan for and it helps when you plan for things that are coming up that you know happen on a regular basis every three months you know you're gonna buy your children more clothes because they grow and that's what children do so you know if you have siblings that is wonderful because you can just pass the clothes on down to the uh, young ones they may not like that but you know that's a saving of cost savings for the household so those are things you want to think about school supplies they are pretty inexpensive right now you know they have a list of things that you need for each grade so you want to check into your school supplies so 
things affect your budget every month that are different. And so we just want you to plan, to develop a plan. And know that it takes time for you to develop your payment plan. And it's not going to be perfect at first. But once you get into the habit, or if you remember that parable I talked to you about a habit, a habit can make you or a habit can break you. And so we want to develop good habits, habits that's going to help us to be successful and to have um, a control over our money. Because if you don't tell your money where to go, I'm telling you, it will leave without your permission. So have a plan, have a written plan. And it's something about writing down a plan that just makes it like authentic, like this is real. <laughs> It makes us like, okay, I wrote this down, so that means it has to happen. It has to come to pass. And when you do that, that gives you a goal, and it helps you to uh, take it out of your mind and in your head. You know how when you just have some things in your head, it's not really almost reality yet. You know, it needs to be in black and white. You need to have it written down somewhere where you can see it and constantly remind yourself, you know, about your um your plan and what you are your goals are set goals setting goals are going to help you if you set a goal to save a thousand dollars then you can monitor that watch it and see it grow and make it a game it's like wow you know i saved a thousand now i can save two thousand you know try to encourage yourself to save and not to spend every dollar stop living from paycheck to paycheck i know that can be challenging not knowing how you're going to make it to that next, like at 11.59, right before you get paid, you waiting on that direct deposit to hit or something like that. You know, we want to be able to plan ahead. Have some money extra left over. I challenge you. We talked about that before. At the end of your pay period, make it a goal to have $100, $200 that are still in the bank that you haven't touched you know, and uh, you will feel so much accomplishment knowing that you didn't uh, live from paycheck to paycheck, that you have extra money left over. So those are some items, some things that I'd like for you to be aware of as we move forward uh, back to school. Today's quote, we have a quote for today. And from week to week, I like to bring you different quotes from different uh, people who have things to say. And today's quote is from Will Rogers. How many of you remember Will Rogers? Uh, and his, his, his quote that I got found from him, it said, it's, it said, the quickest way to double your money, the quickest way to double your money is to fold it over and put it back in your pocket. <laughs> I thought that was so phenomenal because it's like that is so true we always looking for get rich quick schemes and things that can double your money and triple your money you know sometimes we just need to put it double it up and put it back in our pocket and that way you don't have to worry about uh, losing it or um, not uh, getting a return on it you know because there's so many investments out there and we're going to be talking about that in the upcoming shows investments how do you invest what do you invest in but before we can even get to that point where we can do some investments we have to balance our budget yes the b word we have to we have to get to a point where we have excess we have extra and the only way we can have extra money that we can afford to invest because you don't want to uh, invest more than you can afford to lose because it's always a risk factor involved and we're going to talk about taking risk a little later because um, in some cases it's good but you have to use wisdom and how to do it but before you can even get to that point you have to develop a surplus and how do we develop surplus you develop surplus by uh, spending less than you bring in. It seems simple. Oh, that's easy, Rachel. All we do is just spend less than we bring in. Well, do that. <laughs> Doing it and saying it is two totally different things. That's why we bring you tips on how to reduce your spending. Check out your expenses. You know, make sure the lights are being cut off, your utilities, you know, things of that nature. You know, cut back, take your lunch. You know, those are ways that that little bit adds up. You'll be surprised that, you know, you spend two or three dollars a day, five dollars a day for lunch. If you go five days a week, that's $25 in just one week 
uh, if you go to work for five days and take your lunch and spend five dollars, which is usually more than five dollars. So at twenty five dollars a week, you're at a hundred dollars uh, a month just for lunch. That it doesn't add up when you look at it that way. It's like a hundred dollars just for lunch. So then how much are you spending for groceries? <laughs> you know, you can take the same hundred dollars and probably have lunch for the whole month uh, or, you know, longer than that, you know? So we have to outweigh and see what it costs us, you know, really evaluate every expense, everything that you're spending. Is this something I need or is this something I want? You know, look into those kind of things. We're looking uh, to um, make sure that, you know, you're aware of your finances and what you're spending. You know, find ways to cut back. Make it a game. I'm going to find a way to cut back. You know, how to pinch that dollar. How to pinch that penny. How to spend it two and three times, you know, over and over. Uh, couponing. Oh, I have some person, I have a lady who has been um, doing couponing, and we're going to bring her on the show eventually to tell us about couponing. Oh, it's so good to go to the store, and you have... Um, a whole bunch of coupons and your, they give your bill is one amount and then by the time they deduct all those coupons and it's like $5 <laughs> it's like wow that is amazing so there are so many ways because they have so many packages and coupons and so we're going to bring that to you uh, in the up and coming shows as well to give you some tips on how to do that So, but it's going to be up to you I can give you all the tips and all the hints but you are going to have to actively participate in the process. It's got to be to the point where you're going to want change more than you want to stay the same. Are you tired of the same um, financial struggles that you have dealt with in the past? Well, it's time to make a change. And the change starts with you. And it starts with your mindset on how to manage your money and take making an awareness of it. Uh, I wanted to go and revisit we had a lady on a few weeks ago about credit repair and i wanted to warn some because there were some who went to um to get their credit report and wind up uh, paying more money than they should have and i want to encourage you to be aware of that what happens is there's no fees to get your um your credit report there was two agencies that offered you a one-time fee of $7.95 if you wanted to know your score, but you didn't even have to do that. So the website that you go on, if you want to order your free credit report, which I do encourage you to do, it's good to see where you are, what's on your credit report, because many people have errors on there and they don't even know that. So I want you to take an interest in your credit report. Uh, the website was www.annual creditreport.com www.annualcreditreport.com I want you to log on there if you haven't done it already I did it I went and got my credit report and I was able to see some things on there that I see need to be corrected even on my report so I'm glad that I took it don't be afraid sometimes we get fearful because we don't want to see what it is but once you identify and see what it is then you can fix it <laughs> if it's not right then you can fix it but if you don't know it's not right then you won't have that opportunity so I encourage you when you do log on there are three different um, agencies that they're going to re, um, require you to they'll ask you some few questions to verify that you are who you are uh, but long as you are your person to who you are then <laughs> you'll be able to answer those questions that they ask you just to verify that you are the person requesting report so just be careful not to give out your credit report uh your credit card number unless you want that one time fee there's two agencies they'll give charge you 7.95 but if you get it from one agency there's no need to get it from two so if you want to pay that one time seven dollar ninety five dollar fee is just to get your score not to get your report there is no cost if you log on to and www.annualcreditreport.com there is no fee you do not pay a fee you can get your report and it'll tell you everything the fee only comes if you want to see your score right then and so like i said you can only do that one time so i wanted to clear that up because i did have a listener who had went on and wind up signing up for a um an annual fee that was 
I don't even recall what it was, but it wasn't something that was required. So I just wanted to warn you and be aware of that. So uh, the other thing, the other matter I want to discuss today is um, the bankruptcy. We had a show talking about bankruptcy. When is bankruptcy good? Is bankruptcy good? Um, considering we're in the city of Detroit that they're considering uh, bankruptcy as an option for the city. I'm talking about personally. How does that affect you? Is it really a way for you to start over? Now, we know things happen. Circumstances happen. And I appreciate Miss Wendy uh, Turner with Lewis who called in. She was a bank. She is a bankruptcy attorney who called in uh, a few shows ago and share some very valuable information and if you missed that show I just encourage you to log back on because she had some very good information concerning bankruptcy but uh, like I said there's all there's circumstances that happen there's a loss of income uh, if it's a big loss especially a long sustained loss of income divorce illness sicknesses those kind of things um, a chapter 7 bankruptcy is what she talked about. It allows you to um, uh, it allows you to discharge debt. And the thing I loved about uh, the, the show that we talked about bankruptcy, she covered a lot of things we had already talked about. She talked about having a budget, you know, and allowing you not to get to that point. She talked about secured and unsecured debt. And I had we had mentioned that before what the difference is and so when you do a bankruptcy a chapter 7 bankruptcy uh, it it discharges all your unsecured debt and the unsecured debt are like credit card debts and loans or debt that does not have an asset attached to it like a car or vehicle uh, and so what happens when you file the chapter 7 you get an automatic stay and what that means is that all collection proceedings immediately stop against you uh, so those are some in the creditors once you list all your creditors and that was an important point that she brought out that you list all your creditors and everybody will be notified um, about you know your filing of the bankruptcy so you know it allows those who have um, circumstances that are beyond control and it happens and you may find yourself there don't feel bad you know there is recovery after bankruptcy but if you don't have to go there um, then you know try to work through it because it's always better to pay your debt the other thing I found out about bankruptcy which is interesting is that if you do have a secured item like a car or a uh, house or something you can surrender that if you want to surrender that and give up the asset then you can liquidate that debt as well so I encourage you if you find yourself there and you want to uh, you know you have to go to that point there are people out there to help you uh, with bankruptcy if that's an option for you but if not um, just seek help get help learn to live beneath your, need, your means learn to develop a budget it's it may be hard at first but i tell you it's worth it once you go through the process of learning and relearning it's almost starting over like a baby you know when you're a baby you know you you crawl before you walk you know you take baby steps and you just go and every day you get up and you just it's determine that you're gonna make better choices and it's all about our choices it really is everything is about our choices when we get up every morning we have to make a choice and depending on your commitment to your choice will decide whether or not that gets done what do I mean when you hear your alarm clock go off in the morning you have a choice you have a decision to make and depending on how committed you are to getting up and going to work will determine whether you lay there and keep on sleeping <laughs> or you get up and go to work it's a decision every day we're making decisions and so we have to be aware of our finances and where we are with that uh, so if you find yourself in a situation where you need to do bankruptcy contact me I'll get you the information that you can get in touch with uh, Wendy T uh, Turner Lewis who's in the Metro Detroit area and she would be definitely happy and glad to assist you in any matters concerning that 
So uh, at saying that, I think what we're going to do now, at this point, I want to take a break, and we're going to come back in, uh, in a few minutes. So tell a friend, tell a neighbor, let them know Real Money Matters is on the air, and we will be back momentarily with more information concerning your finances.
welcome back. Thank you. Hopefully you were able to refresh your drink, call a friend, call a neighbor, let them know that Real Money Matters is back on the air. And we are so glad that you tuned in. I definitely would love to hear from you. So I encourage you, send me an email. Let me know that Real Money Matters matters to you and that you are enjoying these shows or that you have some suggestions or, or suggestions, or if you have some topics that you would like to discuss in the upcoming weeks. I'd love to hear from you. So I encourage you to email me at realmoneymatters at rachelrkennedy.com. Again, realmoneymatters at rachelrkennedy.com. I'd love to hear your questions, your comments, or um, anything uh, concerning the, the things that upcoming shows that you'd be interested in. Or if it's something I've said and you don't understand and you'd like more clarity or, or direction on, I definitely would love for you to uh, contact me. Feel free while I'm here in the studio if you want to call. You can call at 248-996-8954. Uh, I'm here live until 11 o'clock, so feel free if you have a question uh, or a comment and you'd like to make on the air, feel free to call in and that will take your call right away. Uh, getting back, I want to get into uh, revisit our budget. Uh, we talked a lot about budgeting and developing the plan, and so I just want to revisit to see if you're staying on track. Are you staying on track with the tips that we had talked about concerning your budget? The first thing to identify or to even start your budget is that you must identify uh, all of your income. We talked about income. We talked about having regular income and irregular income. Track all your income that comes in on a monthly basis. It's always good to do monthly because it gives you um, a, a date range in what to work with. So we want to look at each month. Know that every month is different. Uh, and so we want to schedule each month and look at each month and see what was going on. So say for instance, now we're in August, we should already have our budget for September planned. We should already have a plan for our spending for September. So this is August, so we're behind, so we're planning for September. So look and see all your in anticipated income for the month of September. So we're gonna start by developing a September budget. So that's what I want you to do today. So think about all the income that you know that's going to come in for September. Write it down. Get a clear picture of how much it is. Um, anticipate any uh, irregular income. Uh, if you're a commission-based person, uh, you don't get a regular salary or hourly rate wage, you may get commission. So you may have to estimate uh, based on what you've made last September if you were doing a commission job in September because you know they're historically uh, they're trends with um, your income and with commission with spending so those are things that you do when you have a business when you own a business and you track your income um, if it's usually with businesses you have irregular income because your customers pay different every month so that's a, another whole issue if we deal with a business but we're still talking about personal income, personal finance, because guess what? If your personal finance is not in order, you start a business, then guess what? That's going to transfer over to your business. You're going to run your business like you run your household. So we want to get you in a place where you're running your household efficiently financially. So when you get a business, you can just have those good habits and take them on to the business side because really in business you must have good record keeping you must be able to track your income your expenses especially when you have employees and people that are going to depend on you to pay their salaries so that they can pay their bills as well so it's a responsibility being a business owner uh, and of course when you start off you're you're the main person so you can turn about paying your bills as well too so developing a budget for September identify your income if you have a if your salary you know what that is if you are hourly you know how many hours you work a week so you'll be able to calculate that so the month of September write it down this is my income for September then the next thing I want you to do write down all of your expenses 
that you know you have your rent you have your utilities usually they're the same uh, well the utilities they vary unless you're on a budget or a payment plan and if you're on a budget or a payment plan then you know what those are you know your car note your insurance those are regular things that come out put in an amount for your groceries you know you have a set amount for your groceries kind of overfund that account because a lot of times we may not put enough in there because guess what even if you put too much in the grocery fund there can always be extra and if there's extra you can carry it over to the next month so do that just get a basic plan do a quickie plan it's called a quickie budget you know just quickly write down those things that you know and then I want you to step back and think about September. Do you have birthdays in September? Uh, we know we have back to school in September. There's a holiday in September. Are you going to spend money on the holiday or are you going to take that money and spend it toward um, the school supplies that your children need? Those are things you should think about. You know, if you have the extra, that's great. But still you want to be considerate of what's going on in September that's different from August. Um, so identify that, get an idea. And once you look at that number, hopefully you have more income than you have expenses. So what does that mean? That means that at the end of September, you're gonna have X amount of dollars left over. Hopefully that's the plan. But if you do the math and you find all your income and you track all your expenses and you find that you are gonna be short for September and not quite have enough, then we need to start thinking now how we can cut back on some of those expenses that are coming up in September, or we also need to find a way to bring more increase into your life or more money to offset that deficit that you may have. But until you write it down and identify it, you're not gonna know. Encouraging you, write down what your income is that you know, the expenses that you know. Because once you know that, then you know what you're working with. You know if you're going to have a surplus or you know you're going to have a deficit. And if that's the case, it's still summertime. You still have a chance where you can do a yard sale, a garage sale. You may have some items in your closet that are too big, right? You can't fit anymore because they're too big. So you want to get rid of some household things. You know, how many cups and plates do you really need? <laughs> you know, those are some things you can think about. Look through your house. Do an inventory. What's in your house? Do you need everything that's there right now? Is there something valuable there that you could sell that somebody else can have some use for? You may have something that's brand new in the box, never taking it out, never using it. Just imagine somebody else could be using that item right now. They may have a need for that item. Um, so I encourage you, go through your house. First of all, do that September budget. See if you have a surplus or if you have a deficit. If you have a deficit, then you must find a way to bring increase into your life. You must find a way to um, offset that deficit. And then you have to see, you know, maybe I can cut back here, cut back there. Uh, maybe I'm spending too much here, spending too much there. Uh, are you finding you have too much credit card debt? You know, that's another thing you need to identify too. Because if you find yourself with more credit card debt, uh, if you have a deficit, then you most definitely need to find a way to bring increase into your life. And so I encourage you, like I said, to have a yard sale, go through your um, house right now, think about it. I bet you can think of some things that you have that you can get rid of and somebody else can value from it. So just think about that. That's, a, that's an alternative. Another thing, you can always have a, a lemonade stand. <laughs> If you have children, that is too cute. I remember back in the day they had lemonade stands and the children would sell uh, lemonade. So I'm just saying, be creative. Think out the box. How can you bring more increase in your life? And when you bring that increase, have a plan for it. Don't say, oh, I'm going to get some more money. I'm going to go shopping. No, I'm going to get some more money and I'm going to uh, reduce debt. I'm going to uh, reduce this deficit that has occurred that I've allowed to happen because of overspending or because of not just making enough money. You know, your job situation could have changed and you make less, not by choice, but just because that's what happened. And sometimes, you know, life happens and things happen and we can't control them. And so when we find ourselves in those situations, then we just have to find a way to resolve it by 
finding uh, other sources of income you may have to pick up a second job doesn't sound good but know that it's just a temporary fix it's just a temporary thing to get you out of a, dis a deficit situation and know when you do pick up a second job it is going to incur other expenses as well because you'll spend more gas money you may have to get a sitter you know those are other things to uh options to consider so you have to make sure that you're going to make enough in order to even have extra after other uh, additional expenses that are going to incur for you having that additional second job so those are some options so i encourage you get your september budget together identify your income identify your expenses then let me know what's the bottom line is it a deficit or is it a surplus and so that is your challenge and that's what i'd like for you to do today and let me know next week what you come up with. And if you need some help with it, feel free to contact me. I'd be willing to even make some suggestions if you need some suggestions concerning how to manage better your budget or how to develop it even better. But the main thing about the budget, write it down first. And the main thing is that you're going to have to implement it. You're going to have to work it. And so I'm here to encourage you to do that today. So keep that in mind. I have a story I want to share with you today before we end. And it's a story we talked about investments. And in order for you to start your investments, you must have a surplus. But I just wanted to give you a story, a parable uh, that is in the Bible. And I do um, believe in the parables in the Bible. And it's found in the book of Matthew. And I'm going to read it today out of the Message Bible because, as I had mentioned before, uh, you know, the Message Bible kind of breaks it down to where it's uh, everyday language where we can understand it. But feel free to follow me. And the title of it is a story about investments. And so um, we're going to read it and then we'll go back and discuss it. So in Matthew 25, starting at the 14th verse. And so the kingdom of God is like unto heaven. And that's what, um, this is This is a parable. So it says, it, it's also like a man going off on an extended trip. So he called his servants together. So a man's going off on an extended trip. And he called the servants together and delegated responsibilities. To one he gave $5,000. To another, 2000 to a third one, 1,000, depending on their abilities. Then he left. Right off, the first servant went to work and doubled his master's money, investment. The second did the same, but the man with the single thousand dug a hole and carefully buried his master's money. After a long absence, absence, the master of those three servants came back to settle up with them. The one given $5,000 showed him he had doubled his investment. His master commended him. Good work. You did your job well. From now on, be my partner. The servant with 2000 showed how he had doubled his master's investment. His master commended him, good work. You did your job well. From now on, be my partner. The servant given 1,000 said, Master, I know you have high standards and hate careless ways, that you demand the best and make no allowances for error. I was afraid I might disappoint you so I found a good hiding place and secured your money. Here it is, safe and sound, down to the last cent. The master was furious. That's a terrible way to live. <laughs> it's criminal to live cautiously like that. If you knew I was after the best, why did you do the, do the least than the least? The least you could have done would have been to invest the sums with the bankers, where at least I would have gotten a little interest. Take the thousand and give it to the one who risked the most. And get rid of this, play it safe, who won't go out on a limb. Throw him into outer darkness. 
Oh my goodness, look at that parable there. Look at this, this is what happened. The first thing that happened was he delegated uh, responsibilities. He gave out investments, he gave out money. He entrusted this to his servants. He entrusted them based on their ability. So he figured, okay, this person can handle 5,000. This person can handle 2,000 and I'm going to give this person a thousand dollars. So that lets me know everybody has a different responsibility that you can handle. Everybody can't handle the same amount, but handle what you can handle. So when he gave them the money, he left. He didn't tell them what to do with it. He just gave it to them. He said, I'm going away. And he entrusted his wealth to them. Immediately, it said immediately, the one with the 5,000, he went out and he did something. And he doubled that. It doesn't say what they did, but if they had a surplus, which they had the money because they didn't expect it, they went out and he found a way to double the money. He was being a good steward. And the one that had the 2000 he did the same thing. He went out immediately. And he began to double what the master had entrusted to him. They took it, in ser they took it seriously as an investment. And then the one that had a thousand, what did he do? Oh my goodness, he dug a hole and he buried it where it was safe and sound. And you know what that made me think about? That he was lazy. <laughs> he didn't wanna go out and do anything. He was like, hmm, I got this thousand dollars. When he come back, I'm gonna still have this thousand dollars. <laughs> you know, what kind of mindset was that? And so they were out working hard, doubling the money. And that he was somewhere with his feet kicked back doing something, nothing. <laughs> you know, just chilling, relaxing. So then something happened. So after the master was gone for a long time, he came back. And what happened? The one that he gave the $5,000, he doubled it. And he had $10,000. And the master was so pleased. He said, good work. You did your job well. From now on, I love this. It said, be my partner. Oh my goodness. Don't you want to partner with people who's going to be productive? <laughs> Don't you want to partner with people who are go-getters and get out there and get the job done and increase what you've given them? And so that's what happened with him. He said, you did your job good. Be my partner. Uh, and so then the next guy, he gave him 2000 So the, the one that he gave the 2000 he couldn't handle the 5000 so he gave him 2000 And so with the 2000 he doubled his. The master was like, great, perfect. <laughs> you did your job good. You did a good job. I love that. And he said, from now on, you be my partner. He didn't discriminate against him because he had a less amount. He took what he had and he doubled what he had. So then what happened to the one that had a thousand dollars? So what I love about this, I thought it was so funny. The one that gave a thousand dollars, I noticed with the other ones, they immediately just showed them here, this is what I did. You know, they didn't say no, they didn't have no words to say, they didn't say anything, they just showed to them. But the one that dug the hole, he had a whole lot to say. <laughs> Oh, master, oh, I just know you have high standards. He just started talking. Obviously, he hadn't done anything. So he was fast talking, you know, trying to come up with a scheme to explain why he still has this $1,000 and he hasn't doubled it. Because I'm sure he's standing there looking at these other people saying, wow, they doubled their money. You know, what could have been going through his mind? And he was like, man, you know. I could have probably doubled my money. Let me talk to the master and tell him why I didn't do it. <laughs> you know? And so he began to say all this stuff. Oh, I know, you know, you are hard. You know, you hate careless ways. And I know that you want the best. And you don't allow for error. You know, just talking. Just talking a whole lot. Of, I didn't want to disappoint you. You know? Uh, so I found a place. Here it is. It's nice and secure. Here. Every last cent. Here. I'm giving it right back to you. Exactly what uh, you gave me, I'm giving it back to you. I didn't lose any of it. I got it all here. Well, he, the master was furious. I would have been furious too. I just had two individuals that I had gave talents to and they doubled them. And then I come with you who had the least amount of the talents. You didn't even have the most, you had the least amount of the talents that were entrusted to you. And you couldn't even double that. He was 
furious. He said, that's a terrible way to live. It's criminal. <laughs> he wanted to arrest them, put them up, lock them up, because that's crazy. Because he was so cautious, he just put it, he said the least you could have did was put it and given it to the bankers. Do you know bankers, we get, they get very little amount of interest, but he would have settled for that. You know, you can put a whole lot of money in the bank these days and they give you very little interest on your money, but he would have took that. It would have been something. It would have been anything except for nothing. And so he said, take what he had. He took what the least, he took what he had and he gave it to one, the one who risked the most. The one who had the 5000 and made it to them, he took what he had and gave it to somebody who's going to do something with it. And he said to get rid of him, throw him in the outer darkness. Are you willing to take that risk today? Are you willing to use the talents and the gifts that you've been entrusted to? You've been given talents, believe it or not, that have been entrusted to you today. Think about it. Make a choice. Take those talents and double them. Increase where you are so that you won't have a deficit you won't have to worry about your september budget not having enough because you're going to take the gifts and talents the things and abilities that you have that you can go out and bring increase into your life look around do an inventory of your life what is it that's in you that you would love to do to help other people that will allow you to even bring increase in wealth into your life and that's what I want you to look at. I just want you to take a challenge today. Look at your investments. Things have been gifts and talents are invested in you. Take those and double them and bring increase into your life so that you can have a surplus. We want you to move into surplus and I know you can do it. So feel free to contact me. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear uh, your uh, story on how these shows have helped you or if you have questions feel free to email me real money matters at rachelrkennedy.com i'm so glad i had this time with you today and that hopefully you've gotten something from the program so remember uh, you can feel free to contact me via email real money matters at rachelrkennedy.com and i'm so glad we had this time together today to discuss your matter your money matters because remember your money matters it matters what you make it matters what you spend it matters what you save it matters how you manage the money that has been entrusted to you that you worked hard for so remember until Next week, it's your money. Make it count. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week.